Hi, this is Tim Moss with the Watchbox at Dubai Watch Week 2021. I'm here with Grubel 4 c CEO, Antonio Calcia. Antonio, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So this is an insane environment right now where everyone's looking for watches, supply is scarce, demand is as high as it is, waiting lists are a fact. This is your introduction to small volume watchmaking. What is the business environment like for you right now? You know, um, 2020, 2021, I think for us, uh, it will be the best, the best year uh, since the creation of the company. Uh, I think we, we have a lot of requests for independent brands. Um, and I, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you know, uh, we are very niche. Uh, we produce uh, less than 200 timepieces per year uh, and we are independent. And this is uh, very cool because we move very fast. So now, you've previously run in various capacities, both technical and management, uh, Piaget, Panerai, Corum, uh, Sowind Group, Gerard Perigo. What is your business strategy now that you're running a company that makes hundreds, not thousands or tens of thousands of watches a year? First of all, I have to take care about the brand and, and uh, it's my, my, my responsibility to, to adapt the strategy because you're right. Uh, even we, we, are all, we, talk about, uh, we talk always about high-end watches, but of course with Global Force, it's totally different. Uh, and you know, when I started 18 months ago, I was really impressed about, even I know the watch industry since 25 years, uh, you have to be in the company to realize really what, 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 what we do. It's just incredible in terms of finishing, in terms of quality, in terms of uh, inventions, you know. And at the end, it's not really difficult because um, I have a real piece of gold in my hand now. Uh, we are 120 people, and uh, again, we move very fast. Uh, and we have to also to increase a little bit the quantities because uh, the goal in the next three years is to reach 500 timepieces per, per year. But it remains very niche, you know. Uh, but at, at the end, um, I am really comfortable in, in my position today because uh, the potential for Global Force uh, is just incredible. And I feel really here since now a few days. Uh, the, the, the welcome of our new balancier and, the glo and in glo global, uh, the, 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 the request for, for, for this kind of product, high-end product, you know. Uh, you know, the COVID, the last two years, we, 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 we were all in a very difficult situation because uh, with the, impossible to travel, no, 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 no fair, no, 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 really, no relation with an, an, an consumer. But the, uh, this positioning, high-end positioning, it's not really affected uh, the same, uh, like uh, all other in, in a different in a, another um, price segment. This is why um, I think we we are really, really yes, comfortable and uh, uh, for, for the future. Now, in terms of product strategy, in the last two years, for the first time since the first watches in 2005. Grubel 4C has embraced sports style watches, and this year you have the Balancier S2 with strap or bracelet. About how much of your production right now are you going to devote to sports watches now that you're in this genre? You're right. We, uh, the historical offer uh, was really dedicated, uh, really very niche product for, for collectors. It's also a piece for collectors, of course. But we talk, we talk about handmade one, just like incredible, because nobody understands uh, uh, even now what's the difference between handmade and finishing. It's a big difference. Handmade is really made by hand with conventional machine, you know, um, like also QP, like Grand Sonnery. And of course, we will always in our strategy um, have such, such, uh, such type of product for collectors but really in very, very small quantities, you know. Now, for the future, we will have two pillars. The first one is, um, yes, historical pillar, um, and we will, the goal is to produce less than 50 uh, timepieces per year. It's very, very niche, very rare. 
and the second one with the, the, this new is the first the, the Balancier Square is the first uh, offer in this new pillar. We will have in 2022 another three launches based on this this um, strategy. Uh, and what's the goal of this pillar? It's very simple. We have three goals. The first goal is to play in a in a new price segment between 200,000 to 300,000 Swiss francs. And where were you before, just for our viewers? Uh, price range before, we were at 50, 55, 100,000 Swiss francs. You know, it's, it's, we, we could buy half if the, 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 the price range. Uh, it's the first goal. The second goal is, is um, really to, to build strong identity. Um, and with this kind of product, the goal is really to it is really organizable, you know, very immediately. Uh, how this is a global force is very different. The case is, is a little bit bigger. The finishing is different. And, and the goal is really to, to, yes, to build a signature of the brand, an identity. And finally, uh, the last goal was uh, to really to open new doors and to reach a new end consumer. And because in this product you find a lot of modernity, this is why I'm, I'm not opposed about sport. But it's not really now sport. The evolution is more avant-gardiste, more design, more um, with always the same global force finishing. And I think it's it's very interesting for us because because it's a new chapter. It's really a new chapter with this kind of product. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, again, we are under 20 people in the company, and we. Of course, we will always take care about the collectors, but we need also to open new doors and to reach new end consumer. And this is the first step with the Balancier Square uh, to really to, to open new doors, to open new new opportunities for a brand like uh, Global for Sale. So with the Balancier Square, you've got a project that presumably was aesthetically overseen by Robert Grubel. Uh, Stephen Forsey handled the technical side. What do you see your role as at the company? Because you were originally an engineer in product development. Yeah, correct, yeah. Now you're in management. So do you change the course of the founders? Do you, do you curb their enthusiasms at all? Or are you purely on the business side? No, no. We, I work very close with uh, Robert Robel. Huh? Robert Robel is, is the president of the board. And um, I am the CEO uh, executive board member. And we are really very, very close. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a marketing. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's really a fact. Uh, we, we, and we are totally both involved on about the product strategy. When, you know, when I started 18 months ago, and I told him, uh, Robert, we, it's very simple. We have two, two options. Or we, or we continue to do watches, very high-end watches for collectors, but we have to rethink about all the organization, or we have to open new doors with new, new, new uh, an evolution. I don't like to, 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 it's not a change, you know, it's a real evolution, huh? because you find all the codes, on all, all the global for say code in this product, you know, it's not, it's not a, a drastic change, you know, and, uh, and um, it's, the, the collaboration is just amazing between Robert, uh, Stephen, and myself. I am Robert is a, is a president, and I am the CEO. And and uh, Stephen Forsey is a technical expert, you know, and uh, we work real close all together. And um, and that's it. And what what is interesting in, in Global Forsey and uh, thanks to Robert, uh, for him when I he called me yes a few months eighteen months ago, his goal is really you have to take care about the the, the, the company. The future, because we are the founders, but uh, be because we have a big organization again, we have to we take care about the brand. We have to to think about the next steps, you know. And uh, this is what I started to to do uh, with a very again a very close collaboration with Robert. And you know, you are right. I am a product guy. Robert is a genius, in, very, really a genius. And you, you can imagine when we are together, it's it's just it's just incredible. You know, talking about the product, talking about the future, talking about design, and we are really at the same page. And uh, again, very, very, uh, in French, you said complice, you know. Now, uh, Robert and Stephen also have a company called Complatime, and I think for collectors, they've heard that name. What, if anything, is the relationship between Complatime and Grubel Forsey today? You know, Complitime was founded by Robert and Stephen in 2000, huh? and uh, Global Force in 2004. Complitime is a real, is a tool, um, the, the, is, is a tool, is a manufacturer uh, for 90% uh, for Global Force and 10% for other partners. Uh, because 
uh, Complete Time is a very to incredible tool and uh, and um, is, is the holding, you know. Uh, Robert is the major shareholder of the holding, and after you have Steven, and Complete Time is a part of the holding like uh, Global Forsyth. It's very simple. But it's true that today, before we had a lot of projects for all partners, today uh, Complete Time is more dedicated to Global Forsyth. Now, in the past, Global Forsyth has been distributed regionally by various independent distributors. Have you ever weighed the benefits of staying with independent distributors versus having your own factory stores and selling direct? It's a big point because we are talking about product and, and vision strategy and vision about the product. It's true that now we have to, again, you know, my responsibility is really to, to think about the 360 degrees and what's, what, what is the, the best organization, the best strategy, the best vision for this brand because it's totally unique, Global Force. And I have to think also about the distribution, link also uh, with the evolution of the products, you know, and also in terms of communication, you are also thinking, this is why uh, product is, is a one point, but your distribution is also a very important issue for us. And um, I, I have some, some, of course, some milestone uh, are already fixed in terms of distribution and uh, to answer directly to, to your question, I think um, I have to rethink the way how what's the best way to not to sell because we don't sell global for sale. You know, it's you know it's how is the best way to promote uh, global for sale in the in the market, and I think we have to rethink about uh, uh, the way the best way how we we we, we want to really to promote the brand, uh, and I think the of course we'll always. Uh, be very close with retailers and I don't want to put my hand in, in the retail business because it's another business, you know. But uh, flagship for Global Force is very important and uh, uh, this, this is why also we are talk, we are re-talking with uh, our partners, very strong partner Sediki here uh, and the goal is really to open a own boutique Global Force but always managed by our partners. Um, and it will be, you know, uh, and also in terms of point of sales, uh, brand like Global for sale, we need at least 25 POS in the world. We don't need more. It, it's a, it's a big, it will be a big evolution also in terms of distribution in the next three years. And we have a clear vision what we want to do and uh, what's the best for, for, for the brand. Because at the end, all the decisions uh, is really, the priority is really to, for the future of the brand. It's very simple. So within the scope of those 25 global doors, you're talking about having Grubel 4C exclusive boutiques, but they would be run between you and partners, not Correct. exclusively Correct. by the factory. And that, uh, in the next three years, what, what I, uh, my plan is to have uh, around 12 boutiques uh, with partners, and uh, including uh, tw 25 POS, including 12 boutiques with partners. Now you've also worked in operations at the companies you've managed. so. Operations often involves issues like logistics and service, and a lot of collectors find that the worst part of owning a watch is dealing with service. The time, the expense, the difficulty of sending a watch overseas. What are you doing as CEO to make service easier and quicker for the customers? You know, it's a big point because um, with, this, with this price positioning, we have to be totally perfect, you know. And um, talking about the service, uh, I think the project Renaissance du Montre is a little bit, um, we, we go a little bit in this way because we have 30 calibers, because we have seven inventions, fundamental inventions, and uh, we want to really to propose uh, an evolution. Uh, if you, if you, 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 you buy a global force today, and in two, three years or four years, you come back to me and you said, Antonio, I'd like, uh, I'd like an evolution based on my, uh, my product. What can, what, what, what can you do? And this is possible even if you're the second or third owner of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And we have now, in, on, we have 15 references today, as per today, we have, we have 15 references. Uh, and if we, you are one off, those 15 references, you can do really a, a three or four different evolutions uh, on your product. And uh, I think it's totally new in the watch industry. And, uh, um, and the goal was also to not always to, to create new, new products, but to take care about what we have worldwide in our collections. Uh, and the welcome of this project uh, was incredible because um, um, 
you it's a bespoke you are really close with your client at the end because it's it's a big process uh, to, to to do this and uh, and uh, the goal is really to to, to ask the, the client to come in the factory of course and to talk with him about the different evolution etc cetera, etc cetera. and just to be clear what this means is if you want to get customization on a pre-owned watch, if you're a secondary buyer, if you're the next owner down the line, you can get things like engraving and different dial colors, but you can also get changes as extensive as the installation of a tourbillon on a watch that does not have one, the installation of a calendar on a watch that does not have one. That's why it's called Renaissance d'une Montre, because it's literally the rebirth of the watch. We really had new functions, new functions. It's not only customization, you are right. It's not only hand, colors, or dial. It's really, a, you can add really a complication like tourbillon, like GMT, like uh, QP, even you want. Huh? It's a real evolution in terms of products with a real uh, value. You had a real value on your product. Now beyond um, Renaissance d'une Montre, are you doing anything to make service a little bit quicker, like the turnaround times logistically for collectors? But you know, I think our service today is not too bad, huh? uh, because um, of course, again, uh, all the products the, we have, our complications are really very difficult. You can do nothing uh, in, in, on the market. You have to return the, 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 the product at the factory. Uh, but we have now, um, with our extensions, because we plan, we you just bought the land uh, in, in La Chaux de Fonds, huh? uh, close to the factory. The goal is really to, to, to also to, uh, we are thinking of, about uh, Real extension, uh, and uh, the goal was is also to um, um, to manage the all the all the, the, the atelier prototype to, to put a real dedicated team and to reinforce the SAV after sales service because is uh, is crucial for us uh, to be perfect in terms of service. But I think uh, we are also thinking about the concierge service. Huh? Certainly, in the near future, uh, when you, you have a problem with your watches, I will come directly to you. I take the watch, uh, and uh, we, we send the watchmakers, and, um, and we analyze on, 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 on your in your country, in your house, for example. Uh, we want really, the concierge service for this kind of product is is also um, yes, also um, a point that we are thinking about the global strategy. Again, I think. Uh, we want really to put uh, step by step all the, 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 the all, all the, the yes new new milestone new chapter for this this brand not only in terms of product not only in terms of distribution but also in terms of global management you know we, we are doing incredible it's maybe difficult for for uh, customers to understand all the the, the 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 problems that we have to to to, to manage each single day with a company like Global for say under 20 people, uh, 200 watches, uh, very small quantity, very small, uh, um, uh, yes, quantity. And we have also some problem with suppliers, for example. Because when you order one dial, uh, for us, it's three dials, we order four dials, you can imagine the, 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 the problems that we, we, we have to, to fix every single day. And, and I do understand that you're making great strides building the new facility for after-sales service, the concierge folks going, making house calls uh, to work with problems that may emerge in the experience of owning a watch. And this is important because you are going to 500 watches shortly, which is a big step up in volume from 200. Yeah. And people will want to know, will you be able to deliver at least the same service that you have right now? Definitely. The service will be always a priority. Always, always a priority. We, we don't want to really to enlarge our consumer base if we don't really manage uh, really, really, uh, really with a lot of perfection the, the client that we have today. This is why I, I was late because uh, the priority was a big, a, cli a big client uh, uh, for the bespoke and um, uh, no, no, you know, again, with this kind of products, we, we will really take care about uh, um, our client and uh, especially in terms of service. Now, in terms of where that client might be, these days it seems like, and it's not a matter of perception, it's statistics. The United States and mainland China are the two largest watch markets in the world. They also have very different tastes in watches. Do you find that you have to develop separate projects no. to service those markets? Absolutely no. You know, a brand like Gerber Forsyth, of course we, we are, of course, we, 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 
we we want to take note about the comments, about what the what the the, the people love, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, always, always very uh, a lot of attention, but we 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 follow our own own strategy, and um, we can't we can't do two different brands, one in U.S. because the client like this kind of product, and in another one in China, Def definitely no. Uh, we have a clear strategy. You know, we have a master plan, 10 years master plan in Global Force. Where do you want to be in 10 years. years? Yeah. Where do you want to be at the end of those 10 years? No, 10 years, we have a v clear vision about the product, what we want to do in the next 10 years. is a, We call the master plan. This master plan is very clear about what kind of product we, we want to do uh, because we, we plan another three new inventions for the next two years. Uh, you know, we, we, even though we, we open new doors with this kind of product, Balancier Square, uh, we will be all, you will be always um, really um, uh, surprised about what we, we, we are doing for the future. Even, again, with the collectors, in the collector's pillars, you know. We can't change the, 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 the it's not a, a change in terms of strategy. It's really an evolution, you know. So now, at this point, we're at Dubai Watch Week, we haven't been here in two years. There hasn't been a Basel World or an SIHH in two years. How do you reach the customer going forward? Will the big shows come back, or do you have different plans for reaching customers? You know, uh, like I, I told you before, uh, to be really totally transparent, we, we, we are really not affected by this pandemic because our clients were not really affected. The only problem that we had is really logistic problems. You know, to talk about the client, how you how you 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 ship the watch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and of course, we are really happy to be again here uh, to to see client. To we need that. It's emotion. Emotion. The watch industry is very important. But <clears throat> also, you know, the way how we want to in the in the next two years, three years, uh, how we want to promote the product. If we want to do, if you need the fair like a good Genoa. You know, watch day, watch days last year, or Dubai Watch Week, or uh, Watch Wonders in 2022. Um, we are also thinking what's what's the best way. Um, even the world tour, maybe for brand like Grill for say, it's made, it's much better. You know, you go directly to your to your customer, and you you organize directly in, in the country with few customers the the the, the, the show. You know, yes. maybe you don't need grand mess. Uh, to, to promote uh, a brand like World for Sale. And I think it will be really the way uh, to, to be more close. We don't need a, few, a lot of brands. It, this is very qualitative. It's, it's different Dubai Watch Week. <clears throat> we are really, really happy here because it's really total, for me really totally different. And um, I think, the, again, the, the next steps for us, it's, it will be really to, to organize a world tour and to be more close than, uh, in, in each country uh, than Grand, grand Mess uh, with a I don't know, 30, 40 brands. Thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> My pleasure. Thank you.